Welcome, Earthling. We come in peace. We mean no harm. Please take us to your nearest microbrewery. Welcome to Roll 8's Bench. This is Roland. I'm feeling kind of crazy. Today we're going to review the Night View goggles and the Night View scope adapter. So let's get this crazy get up off my son's snowboarding hat and let's get started so here we are with everything ready to put on a couple quick notes one if you haven't watched the unboxing watch that it's going to give a little more details of kind of what came with it I'm going to assemble the parts on the scope show you how easy that is to do I've already did all of this I want you to be able to watch some in high speed, but still, you can see it. Starters, this stuff came and it just worked. Um, big thumbs up for Night View. They've got it together. Um, I believe this came out, don't quote me, I think in 08 maybe. So, a um, few other notes I'll finish at the end of the video, a little more detail. But we're going to get started. The scope setup comes with the light the camera, two rings, I've already got one installed, battery, charger. Pretty simple stuff. Now, as I install here, the second ring, I'm going to start by putting this first one, this scope ring, both of them are the same, goes on your, the front end of your scope and you can mount the IR illuminator. to that and so this is to me the easy way to kind of get started there's not much weight to this so I just let that hang on the wire and now the second thing is, is you need to mount your camera a couple little points I mentioned in the unboxing I wondered hey did this camera adjust there's no place there's no way for this camera to adjust I even sent an email off with a couple questions to the guys at Night View they answered did a very good job and while the email was out, it was one of my dumb moments, I realized that they had made this ring and the distance from the center of the ring they sent to the camera identical. And that was their answer that came back. It's already pre-centered. When you lock it on to this Weaver Picatinny rail, once you got this locked in, it's centered and ready to go. All you got to do then is find the spot. So let's get started, all right? Okay, one thing I learned when I was first putting this on is leave this just a little bit loose because at some point you're going to adjust the camera. The camera has got to be centered with your crosshairs or the view in your goggles will be canted or off and it looks a little weird. So if you get the camera like this or like this, it's going to be off. Now, um, it was very easy for me the first time I put this on to do that. I, I got this... Um, mounted in on the weaver scope ring and it was all ready to go um, centered right away all I had to do was to focus the camera there got it tightened in um, this is snug I can twist it just a little bit all you had to do is take this ring right here and move it a little bit once you got your goggles hooked up focus was easy so I just made sure that my scope was looking at something, made sure that my um, objective lens was dialed in, and I was on in no time. A couple little things to note though. With my scope, I've got a 3 by 12 and if you can see this, hopefully good enough, this right here of my ring bumps into this, and so sometimes when I come down, once that's locked all the way in, between about 10 to 12, I'm rubbing and I kind of have to just bend this a little bit to go out. Not real satisfied with that. The other thing is, is because the way my scope is made here, is if I wanted to have just a little larger view um, of the reticle, 
which means move my camera in just a little further, I'm, I'm out of room here. So I would have to cut this rail off a little bit because it's going to bump into my illuminator dial. One little thing also that i seen is because of this issue here, some scopes um, may be larger. It would require a higher scope mount, so you might need a medium or a high. Well, as soon as you would do that in order to clear other areas of your scope, the camera would then get moved off centered. I realize if you're much of a machinist, a couple of little Allen screws right here, I'm sure this can be reconfigured. Uh, I'm not going to do it here because it is just working. So just a little thing to note. Okay, now for the goggles part. These things slip on very easy. There's a strap here, gives, a little, gives some attention. Um, this front area bumps into your head. I did find that if you can see with them up a little higher like this, you can look into them and then actually look below if you need to. But I found it to be a little more comfortable if I push these down just a little further brought this lens in a little closer so it actually bumped into the bridge of my nose just a little bit. So now it kind of locks the lens on just a little bit more so when I'm looking into that LCD screen a little more stability so I preferred it down. Then if you needed to actually look at something you just swivel it away and look. These have occasionally moved a little. Um, I had read a couple things that people saying they had fallen on them. I haven't had the issue of this falling down yet on me. So it's as simple as slipping these things on. You have a switch here that adjusts the LEDs and the brightness. A button on the side here, which when you push, it quickly switches from the scope cam to this camera. Very simple. This just worked right out of the box. So you put these goggles on. The first thing that you see when you put them on is um, no lights. It starts out with, without any LEDs. So if you've got a good moon or you're almost at dusk, it's not burning up your battery right away. Then you start adjusting the LEDs up or down and you start you get a little bit more brightness. Um, I don't know how many step, steps there are. Four or five. This is your battery. So this plugs into your battery. And then according to their stats here, they're saying battery life is approximately one and a half hours, depending on conditions. So if you had your LED illuminators, your IR illuminators bumped all the way up, you're going to burn your battery up more. Um, I would note that this battery isn't a um, really large battery. You can get some on the internet for a reasonable cost. You can get more from Night View. You can get some others, 12 volt batteries, reasonable cost that could be four to six times as long or as, as much a capacity as that. So here we are. I plugged the battery in. As soon as I did, my goggles are working. Right now, I, I can see no problems. So I have the scope cam. I plug its battery in. And for right now, we're just going to tuck that in here. I plug this into their little adapter that they send and boom, it's as simple as I see through my goggles right now. I push the switch and I'm looking through the scope. Now the scope isn't in any good place that I can see right now. Actually, the problem is I didn't switch it on. When I turn it on, I can see through the scope and the reticle the fills up about the whole view right now. I can sit here and look at the camera. Um, you can see that when if I it, because it's still a little sloppy. When I move left and right, you can see the brightness kind of shift, just like it would with your eye. So once I get that snug down, which I've already did that a couple times, um, no problems there. So overall, the hookup to Simplicity is awesome. Small little battery packs. You can figure out where you want to stick that on your rifle, uh, your gun, however you set up. Just pop this into a pocket, a simple little controller, push the button, and you quickly switch between one of the other cameras. We're going to go outside, and we're going to do the daylight, and then we're going to do a night, and we're going to record all that on a DVR, both through the scope 
and then through the goggles and we'll see how they work. <clears throat> wow, that's a job. I'm whooped. Just got in doing uh, all the videoing of the night portion, day and night portion, day early, but this finished the night of the goggles. Night view goggles and the night view scope. And I'm tired. So, um, I want to show you a few little clips. I realize this is going to get long, so I'm going to show you a few quick little clips of day and night in the goggles and the scope. Then I'll make another video that will be the detailed view so that you can see a full walk view of the range and see everything that I made and recorded for the day and night, both on the goggles and on the scope. So how to wrap this up. Um, wow. If I was rating this on a scale of 1 to 10 on a package that you can get for minimum 600 to 800 depending on where you buy it online. I'll show you a few links and so forth of that um, under the video there. And also for the ability to move it from one scope setup to another, one rifle to another. Um, without issues. I would do a, a definite 8. I would give it an 8 for a lot of reasons. It works right out of the box. I mean it just does. Um, it's simple. Things just line up as long as this stuff matches your scope. Um, they've thought it through. They know what they're doing. Why not the last two stars? Um, this is the part I don't like. They've done such a great job. But I want to give you the couple negatives. Earlier you've seen there is some issues with the way that this can fit close to your um, ring. Say that my um, zoom ring on my scope, it's bumping there. I can't really move this to a new lo location because then my... Um, reticle will be tilted in my lens and I'll feel like I'm walking around like this when I'm looking in the goggles. Don't want that. So I'll, it'd be like I'm drunk or something. Like I spent too much time at that microbrewer. I'm tired. Sorry guys, just wiped from all of this. This um, the other couple reasons I wouldn't give it two more stars is with this setup here, the amount of power this burns, you'll hardly get an hour and a half pretty much out of that. Um, I'd, I've probably gotten close and it just went out, boom. So you're going to need to invest in more batteries. You can, um, this battery here is roughly, roughly six times the capacity of that around 40 bucks online. I'll give you some links. A little later on you'll see more about that detail. This is the DVR that I recorded stuff on. Got a nice screen some of the times I was just I was viewing through there. Um, again, I want to talk about in a whole other video some of that kind of stuff. The other reason I wouldn't quite give the last two stars is I do think that their technology is could be upgraded and I, I believe that from what I know of them as a company the little bit I trust that they're going to be doing that one of these days right now though the system is like it is it should work great for pesting and so forth not bad you've seen it I do think that their uh, the camera quality on this could be a little higher quality I also think that inside the goggles there are um, you know I don't know what all of their proprietary um, guts are in this. One of the emails that I did, got back, the guy did a very good job of explaining there's a lot of patented parts that's part of this process. I may not understand how all of that works totally together, but I do know that there's a little bit better quality. Um, some of the newest goggles on the market have um, higher resolution LCDs. Um, I think that with an upgrade of cameras, maybe that'll come out in the next couple years. I'm just guessing. I don't know their plans. That could uh, make this 
even another notch above what it already is. So again, as much as I would like to have a Pulsar 550 for $1,400 for that, and I add another $100 for probably another IR illuminator, the little Pulsar, that uh, I'll show you that later too, another video. And then I would have to take, I would have to take the uh, scopes on and off. This is a great deal. Now, I hope it would work on all of your rifles. The other disappointing part is it doesn't work on my little P-Rod. My little fun pesting gun. This is the gun that I like to take ratting. Um, or for one barn that I, uh, that's very local, that's got literally thousands of starlings and a lot of pigeons at night. It's nice to be able to walk in there. I've used red lights here on the front. They work okay, but being that I'm colorblind, and if you would watch the very first video, the intro into the night vision research and what I'm planning to do, um, part of it was just trying a setup straight out of the box. Um, later I'll be going into some other ideas that I also have, but the red lights didn't work out real good for me. So I wished it would work on this gun. As you can see, because it's a short little bug buster, there is no way to easily mount this. And because this is an adjustable, I would have to take this off totally, get rid of the rest of their setup. Um, naturally this could mount on top of a little scope ring I've got. I got coming a couple extra rings that uh, UTG makes that have a little Weaver Picatinny rail on the top that, that this would easily mount onto, but I'm going to have to come up with something to hold the camera. So not sure what I'll do there. I wish it would work outside the, right out of the box for this, but I understand what they're doing. And um, if I would just upgrade my scope, that wouldn't be a problem. And now, which way again did you say it was to that microbrewery? I really need a cold refreshing drink. Guys, thanks so much for watching. It's been a long video. Thanks for your patience. I'm recovering from brain injury. I've mentioned that a few times and I don't always uh, have the energy to get through some of this stuff. Sometimes it takes days till I can do something again and I roll it around in my mind. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you shortly with some more ideas along with more detail on the day and night stuff. It's some more ideas about night vision.